everybody, this is Meredith from the Witty Gritty Paper Co. And today uh, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a simple mushroom in watercolors. Um, really easy, really foolproof. Um, I'm excited about it. And I also have a pretty big announcement for you guys. So if you're not interested in the tutorial and you just want to hear the announcement, um, I won't be offended. <laughs> just skip to the end. Um, and otherwise, uh, let's get started. So Here's my paper I'm going to be using today. This is um, Canson. So this is, oh no, it's not Canson, I'm wrong. It's Windsor Newton Cotman watercolor paper. This is their student grade. And um, as far as paints go, uh, feel free to use whatever paints that you have that are earth tones. Um, personally, I'm going to be using some interesting paints I got that are actually Russian. And um, they're made by a company called Rublev. And um, they're very interesting. I, I forget what their binder is, but they're very natural paints. Um, and they work just super, super well for painting mushrooms um, because of the colors that they come in and also the composition of the paint itself. So I'm starting out by mixing a very concentrated mix here. Um, this is a color called Italian Green Umber. Um, it's kind of hard. The green doesn't always come through on camera, but it does have sort of a greenish tint. All that's really important here is you pick a earthy color and that you get a really concentrated mix of it. Okay. So we've got that all mixed. Let's just zoom in a little bit here. There we go. See what we're doing better? Okay. So for painting your mushroom, again, really super simple. What you want to do is decide where you want it on your paper and then just paint yourself a curvy line, okay? I'm going to get more paint and then what I want to do is thicken my line from both sides and I want to leave just a little sort of square shaped gap at the bottom here. Okay? So we'll make our shape here and once again the more concentrated that your paint is the better that this will work so don't be afraid to go really dark with your mix. Okay. Happy with that. Now I'm going to make another one, another color. We're going to wait for that to dry just a little. We don't want it to dry all the way, but we do want it to dry a bit and you will see why in a minute. Once again, this is a really, really easy way to paint mushrooms. Okay, so I've mixed up, this is another Rublev color. This is called Indian Red. And I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm gonna go smaller. Just do a little curved line. Sort of like a, um, sort of flat little bowl. When we come down, we're going to leave our little gap here. And there we go. I think I'll do one more here on camera. I'm mixing together my Daniel Smith sepia and um, Daniel Smith green gold. I always say sepia. I don't know why, but I believe the correct, the correct uh, pronunciation is actually sepia or sepia. Shoot, you see, I just did it now. <laughs> Um, okay, but last one here, and then we'll wait for these to dry, and we'll come right back, and I will show you the technique. I go, I think, a little bit down here, and I'm going to do like a really long, thin one here. So, what we're doing is we're painting the underside of our mushroom caps. So, you'll see in just a minute what I mean. And I'm going to leave a bigger gap here. Okay, so my little red mushroom looks dry enough for us to work with it here. And here's where the magic happens. So what you want to do is you want to get your brush and fill it with clean water. Okay, so I've got my brush, but it only has clean water in it, no paint. And I don't want it to be sopping wet, not dripping wet, just damp. What I'm going to do is just gently paint in the cap of my mushroom. So, paint a nice round cap. You can make them taller. In fact, the more irregular they are, usually the more realistic they look. And then what you want to do is just gently 
touch the underside um, or the upper edge of what you've painted so far. Just gently move some of that in there, not too much, and this will be the little mushroom cap. Well, the next thing you want to do is do your little stem. So just pull this off to the edge. I like to have them get a little bit bigger at the bottom, like flare out a little on the sides, but totally up to you. I left this in real time because I didn't want you to think that um, this took very long. It's like super, super simple. Okay, it's got a little wonky on this side, so I'm just going to lift a little here. Try to rein that back in. Okay, now let's go back to our first mushroom cap. Just gonna paint this in. Nice little plump mushroom. This one is sort of um, portobello colored. Feel free to uh, look up images of mushrooms for inspiration. They are very fun to paint and I thought um, end of summer, beginning of fall, this would be a perfect time to share this. So see, that one looks really nice there. I'm gonna drag out its little stem, pull it out. Once again, I like them to go off to the side, but totally up to you. And there you go, super simple mushroom. And there's one other technique that you can do to make them look even more realistic, which we will get to in just a few minutes here. I'm gonna do my last mushroom cap. The thing that's really important in this is that you don't wait too, too long to go back over it and activate the paint. Like you want your paint to be dry, but not bone dry. So this is all in real time. So we just left it there for like a couple minutes and then we went back in and are painting these caps. So as you can see, this is sort of a long irregular mushroom. Um, there are a lot of mushrooms in uh, my neighborhood. So whenever I go for a walk, I see a lot of interesting kinds, but if that's not the case for you, once again, feel free to, um, to search for photos online. For reference. And this one I gave a sort of a fatter squatter stem. And that red one, that red one got all weird, but <laughs> but I'm pretty happy with these right now. But I'll show you. There's a last step that you can do to add even more realism to the mushrooms. And you can go darker, um, whatever you want, but I find that just the easiest way to get that really pale nice little mushroom cap is just to um, bleed out that beginning part. So we'll come back in a few minutes and I will show you the last step for painting a realistic little mushroom. Okay, so I've gone ahead as you can see and painted a bunch of other little mushrooms around here. Um, one thing you can do too um, to make your mushrooms have different angles is you can paint them instead of like a bowl, you can paint them more like a stretched out oval. Um, and if you do that, they're just gonna look like they're tipping back a little. So um, you can see that with like this green one here, um, it's more of a bowl shape, um, or sorry, it's more of um, a symmetrical oval shape and less of a bowl. And that just makes it look like it's tipped back instead of forward. Um, that's another way to make them look interesting. Um, and also size is a great way to make them look more realistic and interesting. Mushrooms are actually they have more variety than you might think. Um, so those are thoughts. And as you can see, these are some very sedimentary colors. Um, you can see there's like quite a bit of granulation in, um, in a few of them, especially in this original color, this Italian green umber. Um, so that's totally fine with me. But um, I, frankly, I think that makes them look better. But uh, that's just something to to be aware of um, is that a lot of earthy colors are made of clays and of sediment and they're gonna be more granular. Okay, so let's move on to one or two other things you can do to make your mushrooms uh, pop. So if you like them this way, leave them this way. It's your painting, um, but there are a couple other things I like to do. First of all, I like to go over um, the original part of our paintings with a really concentrated mix again. So I have this color on my brush in a concentrated mix, and I just like to go over it, darken it up, 
I like to redefine the line between the bottom of the cap and the top. So totally up to you, you don't have to do this, um, but I do think that it helps to make the object look more three-dimensional. Sorry, my hand is blocking. Okay, so you can do that. As you can see, immediately it jumps off the page more than some of the other brown ones. So totally up to you, just something that I like to do. And then the last thing that, um, that I think is actually really the, the really beautiful finishing touch for these um, involves white ink. So finish up this one here. So um, there are two things that you can do. You can use a white ink and a super tiny paintbrush. So this is one of my favorite white inks. Um, it's made by Copic, um, opaque white. I got it at my art store. And the other thing you can do um, that will make your life a little easier is you can use a gel pen. So this is the only white gel pen that I really like. I've tried a lot of them um, and many of them are good, but this one's my favorite. It's the Uniball Signo pen. Um, and what you would do is, let's pick one that is pretty dark already. I think I'll do this green one here, okay? What you do is you just take your pen or your brush, whatever you're using, and just draw lines out from the center cap from the stem of your mushroom. I'll zoom in here for you in a second. And this is something that you can do after you darken up the bottom of the cap. Um, or if you're not darkening it up, then you can just do it outright. But these are all those tiny little ridges that you see on the underside of mushroom caps. And I really find the more the better. Just finish this up here. There we go. And you can also do this in a black pen um, if you wanted to. Let's just zoom in here, get a better look. Yeah, so you can see your little white lines there just represent the little ridges. And actually this whole painting is a little lighter than I would normally do these. So that's another thing to keep in mind too. I mean, it's, it's still very pretty. It makes it kind of ethereal. But um, it's just something to be aware of is that um, I usually only darken the bottom sides, not the top. That's sort of the point is that the tops look really watery and gentle as a result of not actually painting them in, but just using water to sort of borrow paint from the underside. So um, all just things to keep in mind. I think what I'll do here is I will finish up the rest of these and uh, speed up the footage for you so you can see how it turns out. And um, we'll be back in a couple minutes for the announcement.
Okay, so we're all finished here. Um, I'm happy with the way they came out. This is such a relaxing thing to paint, um, really easy for beginners. It's a great warm up exercise. Um, in hindsight, I probably would have painted them a little darker, but um, but no worries. Uh, and you don't have to do earth tones either. I actually think it would be really cool if you um, if you painted the mushrooms in like neons and then filled in the background with black. I think that would look really cool. Um, I haven't tried that, but I will have to get to it. Um, and you don't have to add this veining. Um, you don't have to add it to all of them. You don't have to add it in general. You can add it with black. Uh, try different things because it's a really simple technique um, and can be taken a lot of different ways. So on to our announcement. So as um, some of you may know, if you've been subscribed for a while, I have had a couple um, past partnerships with a company called Skillshare. And if you've never heard of Skillshare, they are an online learning platform with thousands of classes on all sorts of different topics, very high quality. Um, the lessons are all in little bite-sized chunks. So it's great if you uh, wanna learn a new skill, but you're busy. Um, and a lot of the teachers are at the top of their field. So it's just a great platform. And um, I recently launched my very first class over there. Um, it's called Mastering the Third Dimension in Watercolors. Um, I'm very excited about it. Uh, the whole course is under an hour um, and it goes really in depth into getting your paintings to look more three-dimensional as you may guess. Um, if you're already uh, a member of Skillshare, then you should just be able to take it. Um, I'll leave a link to it uh, below in the description. Um, and if you're not, uh, but are interested in checking it out, um, I will leave uh, links to the two other videos that I've done that have special coupon codes for joining. So the one video has a coupon code for getting three months of Skillshare for free. Um, or no, I'm sorry, it's three months for 99 cents. That's the one offer, three months for 99 cents, but you have access to all of the classes on Skillshare, not just mine. Um, and then the second offer is to get two months of Skillshare for free. So the first offer is three months for 99 cents, second one is two months for free, and I will leave links to those videos below. Sorry, it's a little complicated, but I'll walk you through in the description. Um, but uh, that's just out there if any of you are interested. Um, it's uh, It's got a trailer and nine uh, lessons. So I'm very excited about that. I'd love to see you over there. If you do take it, um, please upload a picture of what you create. Uh, I'd absolutely love to see what you make. And um, the content over there uh, won't be repeated here on YouTube. It's exclusive to Skillshare. Um, all of the stuff on YouTube is still going to stay. I'm uh, still going to stay and it's going to stay free. I'm not moving over to Skillshare or anything. Um, this was just something that I wanted to do more in depth and YouTube isn't really, um, like optimized for doing longer, more in-depth courses. So if you're interested in that, I will leave the info below. And as always, please like, and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And thank you so much for watching. You guys are such a great audience. Um, I hope you have a lovely day. Bye.